What's up guys? Welcome back to Save Mojo Homestead. Today we are bringing you along for dinner making, I guess you could say. This is the first time that we are preparing our Sea Island red beans that we have been harvesting from the garden and we are so excited. Uh, so we're gonna do kind of a red bean and rice sort of thing. We are also using the hawk portion of Chuck, our cow. It's, it's that much more stuff that we were able to grow and raise on our homestead. Now what we're using is, let me grab it, uh, a bean pot. So these are not really made anymore, at least to my knowledge they're not. Um, but it was actually the original crock pot and you can find these things in a lot of different areas. But guys, I gotta tell you, as much as cast iron can add uniqueness to dishes, this thing adds that much to your bean dishes. It is incredible. So that's why I wanted to bring you along for it. And Cass is gonna talk about how you can find these things, where you can find them, because if you're homesteading or if you are just someone who loves to cook, and cook in original styles, then I would say that your kitchen definitely has to have one of these. So obviously, as is the case with any dried beans, you wanna soak them first. So we've had these things soaking overnight. So we're gonna strain them out, give them a good rinse, and then get started. So there's one thing that I'm not sure why it says this, but almost every single recipe involving a bean pot says to grease the inside of your pot first. Now, most of these things are gonna be glazed on the inside. That's why I don't understand why, but I'm not gonna ask questions. That's how we're gonna do it. So we've got some really good rendered down pork fat that we got from our friend Jess over at Roots and Refuge. Um, and that is actually what we're gonna use to add a lot of flavor in these beans. All right, so we got that greased. Before we go any further, I wanna thank all of you guys who have taken the time to become part of our YouTube family. We really do appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for joining along. If you have not done that, go ahead and hit subscribe. We like to consider you guys family on here, and so we would love to have you join us in this adventure and all the things that we do. We do like to try to do some cooking stuff with recipes, talk about garden stuff, livestock stuff, pretty much all things homestead. But you don't have to have a large space to homestead. You can do it on a small scale with a little bit of land. It's basically just starting and doing whatever you can to start providing whatever you can for you and your family. All right, so we're gonna get these beans put in here, add some water, the beef hock, I guess that's what it's called. We also have that pork fat in here, a whole onion from our garden to add some of that aromatic in there. And we'll put some garlic in there as well. These things do go in the oven. They do not go on the stovetop. Um, so you can do them over a fire, but again, you don't really want an open flame. You just want really hot coals. I'm really looking forward to trying that once the weather cools off. So we're gonna put this in the oven, get it going, and you're gonna want, for these particular beans, they're gonna take about three hours to cook. So we're gonna get that started, and then we will take you on our little adventure that we had last weekend where we actually got this pot. All right guys, I gotta take a quick moment to show off this thing. Look at this. Now I've already cleaned it up, but this is one of the onions that we grew. We have never had a lot of success growing onions, so just had to show that off before I cut it up and put it in these beans. These things do look amazing, if I must say so myself. All right, time to add the garlic, get these guys in the oven, and we're gonna take you on a little trip. We are here at the Rabbit Box Antiques and Collectibles in Ridge Spring, South Carolina. Inside there are lots of little booths where you can find just a wide variety of stuff in here. Everything from antiques to hand soap. The other thing that this place has is a tea room. 
The tea room has some amazing food in it. We had some great sandwiches and of course some fantastic tea. So let's go check it out. So this antique store has a lot of great booths in it, but one thing I really wanted to highlight, I've had several people asking me where they can find a bean pot. This is a great location for finding a bean pot. I've found several just walking through. I've seen several of them that are here for sale. So here is an example of a bean pot that they have for sale. These were, like I said before, the original crock pots. When you purchase a bean pot, you want to make sure there's a lid. You want to make sure it comes with a lid and there are no cracks in the lid. And you want to make sure there are no cracks in the bottom. And you can often find where they were made or who made them by looking at the bottom of the bean pot. The one thing I would like to mention is when we make our beans in the bean pot, the flavor of them is just intensified because they are being cooked slowly in the clay. Bean pots come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Obviously, you're going to want to purchase the size of bean pot that's going to hold the amount of beans that you want to cook for your family. Um, but they can be glazed on the inside. They don't have to be glazed on the inside, um, but they often are. And this one looks like it's in really great shape. It has this nice painting on the front and there are not any cracks in it. So this would be a great bean pot to have for your kitchen as well. So this is kind of a more modern, if you will, butter churn. They have your traditional um, crock and wooden dowel churn, but we've also found this butter churn, which is super fun as well. This would be great to have on a farm. If you have a cow, it'd be a really fast way, a lot faster to turn your butter with for sure. And you look at the amount of milk you, cream you could put in this. So like most antique stores, you can find a variety of old and new things around this place. But I have been very impressed that I've seen an antique butter churn in its original crock. I've seen a lot of the enamel um, bowls. We've seen several cast iron pieces. Also, just a lot of these crocks and milk jugs. And we've even found some antique tools. Okay, let's check and see if these are done. Oh my goodness, they smell amazing. Um, when you are cooking dry beans, you don't wanna add salt until the very end because the salt prevents them from getting soft. So you wanna add salt to your dry beans once they're at the softness level you prefer. So these are great, they're ready to go. Thanks for hanging out with us in the kitchen and cooking in our bean pot with us. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and be blessed.